Serve him first, but you do owe him honor. Honor to who honor is due, right? Servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable. We don't have slaves and, and, and masters in this country, but do you have a boss? Not everybody does. I know Ed doesn't have a boss. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> Many of us have a boss, <laughs> and some are good, and some we don't like, but you still must be submissive to your boss, mm -hmm. at least until you get a chance to go somewhere else if you want to. So we don't have the masters, but in a way we do. They have a lot of uh, sway with us. If tomorrow you don't have a paycheck, yeah, you can go somewhere else, but it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt for a while, right? So, we must be submissive to your bosses, your masters, with all respect, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable. For this finds favor, if for the sake of conscience toward God, a person bears up under sorrows when suffering injustice. So you get favor if you bear up under those sufferings, when it's unjust. For what credit is there if when you sin and are harshly treated you endure it with patience? But if when you do that what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God. So, there's a saying out there, you know, if you've got problems, go look in the mirror. You're the one causing them. We've heard George say that a lot of times. You've got to ask the question, am I the reason that I'm not happy? Okay, because if you sin and are harshly treated for it, if you're not doing right and you're making your life, your own life miserable, and you suffer through it, good for you, but it doesn't find favor with God. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you do it is right and suffer for it, and you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God. For you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps. Why would you suffer doing what is right? Why did Christ suffer doing what is right? For himself? He's our example to follow in his footsteps. Did he suffer for himself? Why did Christ suffer? This is what I wrote down. He suffered for you. And you know that now, because you're here, right? Mm -hmm. So why is it good if you suffer? Who are you suffering for? You're suffering for Christ? What's his purpose in that suffering? What is it that he desires? What is it that he wants? He doesn't want to see you suffer, but he wants something. He didn't just suffer for you, he suffered for everybody who's not here as well. Everybody who doesn't know him. He's our example, so if we suffer, if insults are hurled at you, let me find this. I wrote this one down. If you're not hired, I kept pretty quiet about my thoughts on things when I lived in Los Angeles because I, required, I lived as a freelance musician. Every job I got, could be over the next day if they didn't want to keep me or they just didn't call me the next time. And I heard a lot about it, you know, people who worked in the movies, people who worked in the entertainment in that area of the country, they kept their mouths shut about what they believed because they wouldn't get hired the next time. Because they only wanted the people who thought like them to work with them. Because they didn't have any respect for anybody who didn't you knew this. I knew this. I relied on my friends, my colleagues, to hire me, to call me and say, let's play on this, let's play on that. If they don't respect me or if they don't um, like the way I think, it's just as easy for them to find somebody else. <coughs> 
So if you're not hired, I'm talking about politics in most regards, that's what I kept my mouth shut about. <laughs> if you're insulted, if you're not hired, <clears throat> if your friends cut off your friendship, how many times have I seen on Facebook, if you're voting for so-and-so, you can just unfriend me now because I don't want to even know you. Wow. Seriously. Wow. I don't want to associate with people who associate with blah, blah, blah. Wow. <laughs> so, if you suffer doing what is right, it finds favor with God. Doing what is right. And you suffer patiently enduring it. That goes back, I think, goes right back to the scripture in verse 15. By doing right, by doing good, you may silence the against the foolish man. You have to suffer it patiently. You have to endure it. Because you need to find, you, got, you win God's favor, but you also need to win the favor of those that you should win for the Lord. Right? <laughs> Because Christ didn't die for nothing, and he didn't suffer for nothing. He suffered for you, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his footsteps. Who are you suffering for? Mm -hmm. And for his purpose, for Christ and his purpose, you're suffering for your neighbor who doesn't know the Lord. If your neighbor is evil to you, and you endure it patiently, and by your good actions, you silence them. You're suffering for their salvation, should they take it, giving them that opportunity. Verse 22, who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth, and while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. For you were continually strained like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. Amen. Who's strained? I haven't watched a lot of news this week, but I know enough to know that there's been a lot of people in the streets extremely upset about what is going on. They have no hope beyond the person they elected, they tried to elect. They have one thing that they put their hope in. I have the power to vote. I heard people say, my vote means nothing because I didn't get what I wanted. That's not how it works. You, you got the right to vote, and everybody had a chance to get what they wanted. And you lost? Okay. But, was that all the hope you had in the world? There are people who are a fear, fearful. I talk to them, some of them, and they say they're afraid because they're not white. So they are afraid. They literally feel like they are in danger. I don't really think they are. <clears throat> but that's my opinion. It doesn't change the way they feel, right? They are afraid uh, in the LGBTQ so on and so on community, the gay community. They are afraid. They are afraid if they're a minority. Not everybody, but many people are literally very afraid and angry and concerned. I want to read you a uh, scripture in Matthew chapter 9. <clears throat> then he said to his disciples, this is verse 37 and 38, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Where is the harvest? Can you see it? Can you see it right now? 
in what's going on? <clears throat> there are a lot of people who have nothing to hope in beyond what they were trying to accomplish in this country. I think they are the reason that you suffer for Christ. You can argue with them, you can fight with them, and certainly I do believe it's important that we, we, we you know, exercise our rights and our freedom to do what we must do in our government, but now it's done. And now there are people who are angry and afraid, and they will hurl insults at you, and they will be angry at you, and they will, even if, even if politically you, you, you maybe align with them or whatever, it's not a political thing, but many people see it as a Christian thing. I think I've read that 81% of people who say they're Christians in this country voted for Trump. So even if you didn't vote for him, if you're a Christian, you're going to be held accountable for electing Trump. Okay? That's the way the world sees it. It was the religious right. It was the Christians who did this. Some people think it's good. Some people think it's so horrible that they now have a right to insult you and speak against you and maybe even hurt you in your work. <clears throat> Bring harm to you in, in any way that they can because they dislike you. To remove their friendship from you. Yeah. The harvest is plentiful. We can see it on the streets. People are in the streets completely lost because they lost hope in the only thing they had hope in. I just want to read a, uh, a few scriptures in the next chapter in Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8. Jesus is sending out his disciples. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. So, if you give compassion and kindness, and you give the gospel to those who are opposed to you, and those who would harm you and cause you to suffer, you're not doing it because you owe it to them. You owe it to your God, who first gave to you. Freely you receive, freely give. Verse 16. Behold, I sent you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. Verse 27. What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light. And what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim upon the housetops. Remember the scripture that said they, they made... Um, inquiries, careful inquiries. Be careful that you hear the Lord whispering in your ear. Mm -hmm. You need to be focused on that. Because I certainly was caught up in many other things in talking about what happened in the world. And it takes your attention away from what the Lord is whispering to you and what he's telling you in darkness your job to speak it in the light, and it's your job to proclaim that upon the housetops. Verse 32, Therefore everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. Verse 38 and 39, And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who has found his life will lose it, and he who has lost his life for my sake will find it. So, we still have a purpose in serving our God. It hasn't changed. It's not going to change. Even though, for many of us, maybe we got what we wanted here, but the world is still at unrest. There are many people who are your enemy because they, are, in their ignorance, feel that you are their enemy. We need to stay with God, and we need to do what is right, Seek his kingdom and his 
righteousness, do what is good, so that you may silence the ignorance of the foolish, and suffer patiently, not for your sake, for their sake. Because every one of them, you know, they said, um, the millennials. I work with millennials. I don't, I don't really think I'm a millennial. I don't Close. Know. I'm 35. I'm kind of on the top side. <laughs> <laughs> but they wouldn't have me anyway because I, I'm not a living. <laughs> I, uh, there's a couple of uh, young women in their 20s who work with me. And on Wednesday morning, literally their eyes were puffy. I think they haven't been sleeping all night, and they were crying. I could tell you, if the election had gone the other way, I would not have been crying all night. <laughs> I would have gone to bed and got some sleep, probably a lot earlier than I did. <laughs> and I would have been reading this same scripture to refocus myself on the right message, on my purpose, on my king, to know what nation I am a part of and what purpose I live for, and what promises I have, what campaign promises I have that I'm holding on to. I've tried to cover a lot of that today, and uh, we read through a lot of scripture, and I want to read uh, one more to wrap this up. This is First Chronicles. Chapter 29, verse 11. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Indeed, everything that is in the heavens and the earth, yours is the dominion, O Lord. And you exalt yourself as head over all. Yes. I'm glad that that's our God. I'm glad that neither Trump nor Hillary is my hope. I'm glad that I live in this nation, but I'm also glad that it's not my first kingdom. Amen. It's going to pass away. And I have hope in something greater. So, I hope uh, that we can receive the word of God. Thank you for listening. Then we're called to demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> that was going through my head throughout the whole, all of your teaching. We're days. called yes. to demonstrate. He demonstrated his love for us. Amen. In that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Amen. And we have been called to demonstrate Him. Mm -hmm. and especially at a time like this. Amen. To demonstrate who He is. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's a spotlight on you, whether you know it or not, because there are people who are upset. That's right. And they're watching you now. <coughs> and they're looking at you to find fault in you, I'm sure. Let them find God's holiness and His righteousness. His, his love. His love and His love. His compassion. Amen. His kindness. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Lord, that's what I have. Thank you. God bless you all.